service of CNC Worldwide. CNC Podcasts are a service of CNC Worldwide brought to you by the Greece Chamber of Commerce, providing more than 800 member companies with business solutions since 1984. The Red Cross was assisting four people with temporary housing after fire hit their home in Gates Wednesday afternoon. The Gates Fire Chief says the two-story on Queensland Drive will probably have to be demolished. It was gutted by the fire and the second floor fell in. The cause is undetermined. The chief says two adults and two children live in the home. The adults were home and smelled smoke. They came downstairs to find their living room was on fire. They went next door to call 911. The house was fully engulfed in flames in less than five minutes. A man shot by a Monroe County Sheriff's deputy in Pittsburgh earlier this year has accepted a plea deal, admitting to two counts of attempted robbery and one of menacing a police officer. Vincent Zagari of Ogden will get 12 years in prison, less time served, when he's sentenced on September 16th. The 22-year-old first stole a car in Ogden, then was caught shoplifting at the Pittsford Wegmans, tried to carjack a woman in the parking lot after crashing his stolen car, then pointed a realistic-looking BB gun at Deputy Bridget Davis, who shot him. Zagari also had cocaine and heroin on him. His mother says Zagari became addicted after getting hooked on painkillers following a sports injury in high school and went into a rapid downward spiral. She's hoping he'll get help in prison. The second of two Rochester men wanted for the murder of a city teenager was picked up in Ithaca this week after he was spotted by a police officer who had just looked at the wanted bulletin and recognized his face. Officer Don Barker spotted Vincent Bean on the street in Ithaca, and he was arrested without incident. He was wanted for the murder of Trayvon Teasley in June. The 17-year-old student was stabbed to death outside Wilson Foundation High School. Rochester's zoning board has given a developer permission to tear down an 1870s vintage church on West Main Street to build a new grocery store. Developer Marvin May got permission to demolish the church at 660 West Main, contingent on demonstrating that he has funding for the project and that the land be used only for a full-service grocery store. May's plan set off a dispute between residents of the Bullshead area, who don't have a nearby grocery store, and groups including the Landmark Society, who want to see the building preserved and redeveloped. The Ontario County Sheriff's Office has identified the man killed in Tuesday's five-way crash in Farmington as 57-year-old Lee Scoot, a longtime Hopewell town employee. He was on his way to Monroe County on town business when the wheel came off a pickup truck on Route 96 at Payne Road. That rolled into the path of a bigger truck hauling six tons of grain. That truck lost control, went into the wrong lane, and tipped over. It landed on Scoot's pickup truck and killed him. The Hopewell supervisor says Scoot had worked for the town 27 years and was just looking at retiring. The Livingston County Sheriff's Office is responding to a video that shows a child abusing a dog, which has drawn criticism down on the department. Sheriff Thomas Doherty says he first learned about the incident Tuesday afternoon. He says a records check found no complaints made before then. Once it learned about the possible animal abuse, Doherty says an investigation began. They learned the incident happened in Dansville, contacted the Dansville Village Police, which took over, located the family involved, and took the dog from the home. The incident remains under investigation. The video showed a boy of about eight hanging the small dog by his leash. Both New York State Electric and Gas and Rochester Gas and Electric are warning customers that the Green Dot Money Pack scam is being pulled again in the Rochester area. A person claiming to be from RG&E or NYSEG Calls tells you they're about to shut your power off unless you buy a Green Dot Money Pack card right away and give them the card information so they can cash it. The utilities say even if you are in arrears, they don't ask you to buy a debit card to pay them. If someone mentions it, hang up. Monroe County work crews shut down the Charlotte Pier for a number of hours on Wednesday so they could bring in a crane and lift a large pipe into place. It's part of the pumping system being built to address the algae problem at Ontario Beach Park in Charlotte. They'll eventually be able to pump the algae across to the other side of the pier where the Genesee River will carry it away, and that should stop rotting algae from ruining the water quality and forcing officials to keep closing the Charlotte Beach. Your next CNC podcast is whenever you click on one of our pages and catch one. We post updates as necessary. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News. <laughs>